Bitcoin, Ether, Tether, Dogecoin, Cardano. None of these terms existed before 2008. But over a decade later, cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology are radically disrupting the world of finance. In 2021, the total value of the crypto market reached over $2 trillion. And while they've had their ups and downs, they don't look like they're going away anytime soon. But what exactly are cryptos? Where do they come from and how do they work? Well, in October 2008, a user known only as Satoshi Nakamoto published a white paper called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer electronic cash system to a cryptography mailing list. Nakamoto, whose true identity is still a mystery, wanted to develop a payment system that was secure, decentralized, and crucially would cut out the need for trusted third parties like banks and financial institutions to verify transactions. To do this, he had to protect the system from the double spending problem. This is the risk that digital cash or a digital token can be spent twice. In a traditional system, financial institutions verify the transfer of funds and prevent this from happening. Nakamoto's solution was to incorporate a publicly distributed ledger into his protocol, which essentially works like this. Maya has one Bitcoin that she wants to transfer to Ali, who has no Bitcoins. He, in turn, wants to give one to Jay, who has three Bitcoins. Jay then sends four Bitcoins to Maya. All of the information about these transactions is inscribed in a ledger that's distributed to everyone in the network. Every 10 minutes, all transactions are compiled in a block, which is added onto a chain of all the previous transactions. This is known as the blockchain. If Jay then wants to try to send another 3 bitcoins, the system prevents him from doing this because the publicly distributed ledger confirms that he doesn't have the funds to make this transaction. But before a block gets added to the chain, it has to go through a process called mining. Here, computers within the Bitcoin network join a race to solve a complex computational problem which is designed to become more complex the more computers there are trying to solve it. Whichever computer solves the problem first is allowed to verify the block and add it to the blockchain for the reward of Bitcoin. At present, the protocol and the source code stipulate that only 21 million Bitcoins can be mined in total. In Bitcoin, there is a hard limit to the amount of coins that will ever be created that's set at 21 million and in the end we have to realize that bitcoin is just software and if the community agrees on it they could theoretically agree to increase that limit now obviously it's not going to be a very popular decision to do so because they think that scarcity is probably what makes Bitcoin the most valuable. So they'd be very much inclined to not make a change like that. But from a purely theoretical perspective, it is absolutely possible to increase that limit. But if Bitcoin isn't your thing, there are plenty more cryptocurrencies to choose from. The original crypto has given rise to thousands of different coins, and more are being added all the time. Cryptocurrencies have come a long way from their humble origins, most notably in the eyes of the very institutions that Nakamoto originally sought to circumvent. Banks like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley have already started trading cryptocurrencies, and the EU's European Investment Bank recently issued its first digital bond on the Ethereum blockchain. Central banks around the world are also exploring the potential for their own digital currencies. The best way is go figure out what this is all about so that you can make an informed decision for yourself. And then with that knowledge, you'll be able to make decisions as to whether or not if you, you know, if you agree that this is, you know, going to be a big part of the future. 